language, and if they want to say something new, they have to physically manufacture metaphors. Um, the other is uh, a book we've, uh, we at English Pen, I work for English Pen, um, has just given an award to. Um, it's The Information by James Gleek, The History of Information from uh, um, the First Words to, to, to Email. Uh, something in, um, in, in Gleek uh, was very um, interesting. Um, he says that when the Oxford English Dictionary uh, compilers compile words for the English language, they go to the literature to find examples of those words. Uh, it reminded me of this, this China Mayville um, science fiction novel, this, this idea that um, you can't really think, or the modern person can't really think unless they have words. Uh, and these words, more often than not, come from literature. Um, we've mentioned Shakespeare several times, and he's the obvious guy um, to mention. Introduced hundreds of new words to the English language. I looked them up on the train. Addiction, amazement, arouse, and assassination. And that's just the A's. Um, also, Shakespeare's clichés. They weren't clichés when, when he wrote them, but they're clichés now that, that um, imbue our thoughts. A fool's paradise, a sea change, as pure as the driven slow. Discretion is the better part of valour. Um, and also Shakespeare's concepts as well, not just these, these phrases that pepper our language, but ideas about romantic love, honour, justice, we've talked about a lot today, um, and kingship um, come direct from, from Shakespeare and, and influence um, the way we speak. They particularly influence our political journalists who are obsessed with framing everything in modern politics in the style or in, in, in Shakespearean terms. Um, and I, 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 that can't fail to have um, uh, an effect on, on a nation's um, self-image, that we're part of some grand narrative. Um, the archetypes aren't just from Shakespeare, um, you know, they're from all over literature. I think it's, uh, these archetypes persist because of literature's permanence and, and, and longevity that other media um, doesn't quite have. I mean, staying with the sort of premier league of, of novelists in the canon, um, uh, Dickens, uh, you know, uh, of course, Scrooge is a word. Dickensian itself um, is a word uh, to describe a particular social problem that was solved in no small part by the writings of um, Charles Dickens. We also think of Austin, Bronte, George Eliot. Um, their characters stretching against their social and, and geographical constraints that have a, a, a real um, impact on, on feminist thought and the way we consider a woman's place in, 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 in modern society. One more, Orwellianism um, is another sort of pejorative political concept that sort of dominates our discussion. Um, a quick sneaky move now, and I, I wonder if the, the, the dragons will let me have this. Are political texts and tracts and economic tracts literature? What about Adam Smith? Um, what about um, John Stuart Mill? Um, I remember that anecdote of Mrs. Thatcher throwing a book on the table saying, this is what we believe. It was a book, a well-written <laughs> book by, uh, by Hayek. Yeah, are you going to let me have that? <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll move on. But to, to, to label this point that, that literature is the bedrock of culture, all our national treasures, like Judy Dench and Ian McCallum, that they, they made their careers speaking literature. Um, our national treasures on the TV, our news readers, um, are also, for the most part, uh, literary historians. Mark, Paxson, Humphreys, Easton. Um, the TV will <laughs> simply not stick money into something unless it has a long literary um, pedigree. Um, or, or in the case of Downton Abbey, it sort of pretends to be, uh, have a literary um, pedigree. All TV detectives um, are literary detectives first. Um, and as for the literary influence on film, well, I'll just talk about, I'll just say Harry Potter, we can work all the way back through the canon um, there. Uh, I mentioned the canon, the literary canon, um, a bit of rhetorical jujitsu for you all now. Uh, you're going to say to me, I know you're all going to say, Rob, oh, the canon of English literature is polluted. What about all the Irishmen in there? Oscar Wilde, George Bernard Shaw, James Joyce. What about the American influence, Mark Twain, Emily Dickinson? And Indians keep winning the Booker Prize. <laughs> um, and I say, yes, that's all true, and it's all okay. It's a perfect metaphor for Britain. We're comfortable with those new voices coming in, appropriating these people into our literary canon. And the fact is, we're, uh, we've, um, uh, Ian mentioned language as being important, and I totally echo that. Um, we are a nation whose language and 
Jones literature has been appropriated by the rest of the world, and, and this is our exceptionalism. Um, and I don't, I, it can't fail to have an effect on our, on our site. A, a final example of this, which um, I think David touched on at the very start, the King James Bible. Um, it's had a huge influence on British ethics, morality, and language. And we can have an argument about whether we should put it in the fiction or the non-fiction section. Um, but as Michael Gove and Richard Dawkins both agree, it's most definitely literature. Yeah. Thank you.